Hey guys, Rod here again, and in today's video, what I'm gonna do is showcase my clients, Karen and Steven, and their one bed aquaponic system, and we'll have a look at that over the next six weeks of what they've been able to produce and how they've, they've gone about it. Hello everybody out there. Just thought I'd share this little system here. This is Karen and Steve. And uh, we just built them this system yesterday. It's a two bed system, but two separate systems. So this is a very unique little design. And uh, it's a simple design where you've just chopped the top off, off one of these IBCs, we flipped it over, and it's just one grow bed. If I lift you up there, you'll be able to see it a little bit more clearly. But uh, I might just ask Karen and Stephen why they actually wanted aquaponics at their place. So why, why did you actually want to do aquaponics? Because we were just thinking um, it'd be nice to be a bit more self-sufficient. With COVID and everything going a bit strange, we thought, oh, you know, maybe if we can grow a few more veggies and get some fish for ourselves, that that would be really handy. So that's what we're looking forward to. So I haven't done a whole lot of gardening successfully before, hoping this is going to be a big change. Fantastic. What about you, Steve? Well, we've just been through uh, all of this ridiculous COVID-19 stuff and we've had uh, shortages in supply, we've had broken supply lines. You'd go into the, um, into the supermarket one day, there'd be a whole missing section of fruit and vegetables. So we're just a bit concerned there with just being able to uh, feed ourselves a bit in future and be more sustainable, be able to uh, be a little more self-contained with how we do things and um, thought this would be more nutritious and a better way of doing it. So this is providing the beauty of both fruit and veggies grown in our own garden and at the same time raising fish. Um, we just thought it was a great combination, great way to set ourselves up for the uh, the uh, future. And nice and healthy, <clears throat> that we know what we're doing fertiliser wise and everything else as well. Oh, and and we successfully uh, raised a, a whole lot of guppies and had them breeding in the tank around in our fountain <laughs> and the other side, so that inspired us to say, well, if we can do yeah. this, we can uh, we can handle a few uh, perch in the bottom tank. Fantastic, girl. Absolutely, it's very simple. Aquaponics is actually pretty simple. It might be a little bit of time up front, but you'll uh, get the benefit over, over the years and years to come. So it is a set and forget system once you've set it up. And uh, over the next couple of months, maybe we might um, just monitor the progress yeah. and uh, we'll see how, how quickly it all grows for you. Yeah, sounds good. Awesome. As you can see, just got one grow bed on the top and then underneath, uh, it's just a simple design. We haven't even cut the cage whatsoever. All we've done is just insert a little bit of timber here and you can see the pump has, um, it's in PVC pipe, just a 20 mil pipe, comes from the bottom, pumps to the top, and then it's a single unit system. The water flows from the tap, comes down into this pipe here, which is a siphon in there, and then it just, it's one loop system. And we've just replicated the same thing next to it, so there's actually two garden beds here, completely separated from each other. Hello, we're here with Steve and Karen, and it's a monumental occasion. We're just about to put fish in. We've just added the siphons. This is the third week now on the cycle, and uh, everything is growing so well. Let's just have a little squeeze here. You can see the lattice, it's out of control. That's ready to eat right now. We've got shallots, it's also ready to eat. We've got marigolds in flower. Everything's in flower here. Steven's gone ahead and added some um, trellises made out of clothesline, which is fantastic. You can just see the growth in both the beds behind me here. Uh, it's all out of control. We've even, what are these, uh, zucchinis? Are these zucchinis, zucchinis. Are these? Yep, zucchinis. We've got flowers on the zucchinis. We're, and we're hoping they germinate. Yeah, we're looking like germination. Steve, you got anything you want to tell our people out there? How's it oh, all going? No. Yeah, look, it's, we haven't harvested anything from this yet. We're waiting for our tomatoes to go to go bang. So we've got uh, something to go with the lettuce and lettuce by itself is a little bit dry, but you know, yeah. we're, we're working on that. Strawberries in the front there, all uh, they're taking off with a couple of varieties of lettuce. Uh, 
cherry tomatoes uh, look like they're going mad there. We, that was just from squashing a couple of tomatoes in there. We've got some sweet peas um, taking off. Rock melon. Uh, I think we've got pumpkin in here. We've got some jack pumpkin in here as well. But no, it's all uh, going, going fantastic. And I was super excited. This is the first week I didn't buy lettuce at the supermarket. Fantastic. Because I'd seen this and I thought, nah, this is going to sort us out. Awesome. So we just got the fish as well. It's our third week on the cycle. We're going to add some fish and watch this space. Oh, yeah. It's all going to kick off out of control once you add some fish. So let's do that. Let's add some fish. All right. So what I always do is check the pH first. So Stephen's done that. The pH is, is neutral, seven. The siphons are working a treat, they've just triggered, I'm very happy to see that. And look, what I, the second thing I do is check the temperature. Now, I don't use the thermometer, but maybe we should. I should suggest a the thermometer. Um, now, the water is slightly cooler in, in your um, tank, because I've just driven over here and mine would have been the same. So normally I would use a container, but just for the purposes of this, I don't have one. <laughs> so I just add a little bit of your water in with my water. Ah, perfect. Here, this just for this occasion. So, now, if you've ever kept fish before, you would float your fish for two minutes, say, uh, within the water in a bag, if you buy it from a pet store or something like that, you float them, I'd usually float it for 10 minutes, actually. Uh, but this water's not too much different, and just by adding some of your water in with my water, just for a minute while we're talking here, that is actually um, creating this similar temperature, so, so now that I feel that, very similar. Now, you can use a net if you got one. If not, you could use your hands. <laughs> and Excuse we are using, container. using our hands. Here's a container, you want to come close and have a look at these little fellas. So we've got one, two, three, four, wow. five, six, seven. I'll just grab a few more. Now they're all similar age, but they're different sizes. There we go. There's 10 in there. And we'll put 10 in the other one. I'm getting this little gap here. <laughs> All right. Think skinny thoughts, Rod. There we go. So, there we go. So, one, two, three, four. There we go. You can see, see the size of them. Now, it doesn't actually hurt them to be out of the water for a couple of minutes. They, don't do it too long. <laughs> don't do it too long, I clarify. But um, look, if the fish are outside, just in your hands for 20 seconds, even up to a minute. Like in a natural waterway, a stream, if you can imagine, when the river beds actually dry up, they can tolerate low water. Um, so it doesn't actually impact them too much. Don't go more than a minute though. Um, and then throw them back in as quick as you can. Normally I would be as fast as I can, just like that. 10, 20 seconds, you're done. So that's really great. So now we've got fish, we've got siphons, and we've got it all cycled. So in the next week, um, what I suggest is just put a little bit of sea salt in just to keep the system going. And everything's gonna flourish. You can see here, it's a little bit yellow. Bok choy's so, not working very bok well. Bok choy's aren't liking it yet. Now, bok choy will pick up because we've got some fish waste, but until that happens, add another cap full of um, sea salt. Yep. Just once, uh, do it today and then maybe Friday do it again. That will change the colour of the leaves, everything will start to, to go well. Now, did we put some iron chelate in here previously? I don't think we did. I don't think we did. So what we'll do next is put some iron chelate in here and that will also take the yellow out of the leaf very quickly. It's like an iron infusion if your body uh, hasn't got much iron in it. So we're giving the plants an iron infusion. Um, all right, so I'll leave it with you. You've got your fish and put the cap on the siphon. The siphon is working well. You've got oxygen everywhere in your water. You've got tomatoes. What more can you want? Look at it all. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, so this is a six week mark for Karen and Stephen's system. Now, they're actually going away, so I'm just, just going to check over their system just a little bit, just do a little bit of maintenance here. Now on this particular system, the first thing I always do is just make sure the pump is running uh, fine, which it is, I can see water's coming out, but just to check, just to check, I'm just gonna take off this fitting, this elbow, and although water's gonna go everywhere, we'll just see if the water's flowing nicely and if there's anything stuck inside. 
that's the first thing I always do. So you can see here, no problem. We've got a good, a good pump right there. There's no problem there, there's no blockages. That's the first thing I usually check. I'll just tighten it back up. But as you can see, look, there's phenomenal growth here in six weeks. The tomatoes are really tall, they're fruiting. Last time I was here, they were just in flower. And now I can see the fruits just yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, also, I can see the cucumbers. Cucumbers are climbing a lot higher than they were before. Just come around this way. Um, yeah, look at these flowers. There's a lot of flowers on the cucumbers. And look at the, the growth right there. They're at least a, oh, almost a metre higher, these tomatoes. So let, let's have a look at the second one. Just come around this system. I can see a lot of lettuce has been harvested as well. The strawberries are, are growing much bigger. And uh, look at look at the tomatoes here. It's just there's a lot of buds there. They're going to to bloom very quickly and fruit as well, just like the other ones. Uh, what else have we got here? Yeah, marigolds are, are flowering. Cucumbers. I can see bees on the flowers, so it's all being pollinated well. And I can see fish swimming around down here. Looks like the fish are doing okay as well, but I can see a bit of fish food in here. Um, so maybe we're overfeeding them a little bit. All right, so in just six weeks, we basically had a new garden. I was just wondering, how has that changed your life? I'm loving gardening now, and I never had before, because I've tried growing vegetables lots of times in the past, and they've always failed. If they need to rain set, well, they just died. And you know, when I come out each day and I look at my letters and I look at the other things that are growing, it gives me real excitement. So I haven't bought letters now for about four weeks and I'm watching the tomatoes grow and I'm thinking any day now, I won't have to pay the exorbitant prices at the supermarket. I can do it for myself. And each night, Stephen comes in and he'll say, hey, what am I getting from the garden for dinner? And off he goes and, and takes bits and pieces for dinner. And it's another hobby that we've got that we're now sharing. I'm enjoying that too. And who feeds the fish? Probably a combined thing. Karen does most of the time. Oh, I do at night and Stephen does in the morning. <laughs> and he balances out the water. He does the, a hard part in the scientific stuff. And Karen does all the scientific stuff. Perfect. And how easy or hard do you think aquaplanting is? Way easier than I thought. So that's been really good. And not very time consuming. So it's, it's definitely something I'd recommend. So we've, we've been telling all our friends how great it is, and they're all excited and keen too. Excellent. I can see in here zucchini, very small, just starting. So in six weeks, we've got zucchinis, we've got marigolds, we've got beans. Everything is growing really, really well. Did you notice there's some fruit there that the peonies are starting to fruit and um, it's just really good. It's a nice focus point for the two of us. It's, uh, it's nice to see the, the fish in there and just be able to see things happening and growing and it's, it is actually quite simple to keep working. Um, we love it. Hey, I really appreciate you watching and I'd like to know what you thought of this video so feel free to write in the chat box below and if you're new to this channel and you'd like to know more then hit that subscribe button and if you wouldn't mind give me a good old thumbs up so i know i'm on the right track and just to also let you know too that i do have a private facebook group and i go in there live every week and i answer questions from the chat as well so feel free to join that as well and i'll put it in the in the comment section below